Yo, what's up guys? It's Alex Rome, and today we're working on the same project we were working on all week. This one's a little different though. I already made the drop because I couldn't just couldn't do it on camera. I didn't know what to do. I was listening to songs all day. It's 12.56. I was listening to songs since 8 o'clock this morning trying to come up with or trying to find a drop that I wanted to copy uh, or get inspiration from and it just took me all day but I finally got one I didn't necessarily take this from any song uh, because just I couldn't find a song that 100% matched with what I had going on so I just took pieces of a bunch of different songs a couple of which were from Bitbird a couple songs had a lot of guitar in it a couple songs was from my man Fabrizio. <laughs> I was listening to uh, his SoundCloud. You guys should go hit up Fabrizio. I'm super talented. I was trying to take inspiration from some of his songs, but anyway, uh, yeah, I came up with something. I'm gonna play it from the beginning. Show you guys where we're at so far. It changed a little bit before it. The bridge changed. I have a bridge melody now, so now we go intro, verse, bridge, drop. And then I'm going to show you guys how I constructed the drop. Okay? Let's get it! Mind you, the drop's not done, but there's a lot to learn in it. A lot of cool things I could pass on to you guys. melody here new brand new melody for the bridge I love the idea. I think it's great. Um, obviously, like the elephant in the room, there could be more flow everywhere, but that's where fine tuning and finishing your song happens. Right now, we're making the song, so you would never stress about flow right now. Right, right now, at this point in the song, look, we got the three major sections. We have verse, bridge, and we have drop. And realistically, you're looking at idea one, one for the verse, idea one for the bridge, idea number one for the drop. So we have three ideas and now as a song composer, producer, we need to become an expert as this get goes on and say, okay, well now that I have an idea here that I actually kind of like uh, and an arrangement that I kind of like, aka arrangement uh, 16 bar bridge, 8 bar verse, 8 bar intro, uh, so we're gonna have a 16 bar drop how do I make these things flow together and connect and become one because remember creating a song isn't about three different sections it's about one song that has to be cut you know has to sound like one thing that's what producers do they take a bunch of raw ingredients and create one thing with them with all these layers that's why EDM is so you know could be so difficult because we got 43 layers here uh, and we have to make all 43 layers sound like one thing so I mean that's just like a little word of how you should think about this stuff moving forward uh, obviously we have some mixing you know some dirt, dirty mixed areas in this but 
again, we're not really at a point where we can go forward and perfect everything because we won't have anything to perfect. We just got a couple ideas piled on in and we're calling it a sketch. This is what I call a sketch. So here's my rough sketch and here's my drop. I want to show you guys how I made this drop. There's plenty to learn here. So this drop, I, I've been I'm out of ideas with drops. I've been listening to EDM for so long and I'm bored of you know basic th sounds uh, so I'm kinda trying to focus toward a newer fresher sound you know if if EDM were to last uh, and not ever die out I think it will it will soon evolve to the use of like a lot of guitars I, th I, I seriously think that like guitars are gonna take this genre over uh, eventually I see like the newer fresher labels like Bitbird a lot of those songs have guitars a lot of those new songs they're literally calling tagging songs as alternative rock with literally without any you know real guitars just all synthesized guitars and synthesized drums and bass lines so I just think it's kinda interesting where EDM is at right now it's in a really weird weird place so what I'm going to do is show you how I made this drop. This drop started out like this. That's like an awkwardly off balance sound, but I actually love it. I love off balance sounds. I'll never have a perfectly ba like perfectly balanced sound anymore because it's just not fun. <laughs> so how did I make this? I actually took these and I did this. I wanted a tight sound on this drop, uh, kind of like a dry sound. That's why everything kind of dries out when we get into the drop area. And obviously I'll figure out something to cool something cool to do with that lead I haven't went in on that lead yet I just kind of laid it down so there's two parts of writing a lead there's going in on it and then there's just laying it down laying it down is the easy part going in on it is where you introduce yourself to that sound so let's go that's just all Alex language by the way <laughs> it doesn't actually mean anything okay so I wanted to chop this up and make this sound with this is that faded oh I don't even have crossfades on there so we have this sound here ouch that was loud sorry guys sorry guys so now we have to make this rhythmically bounce baby so let's go let's loop it there let's take this and I actually took the transient off so you get like kind of a weird sampled sound like that isn't this cool like I would highly recommend you guys all try messing around with this I've done this a lot and never actually finished a song with any sort of sample manipulation like this um, because it's really hard for me to make uh, rhythms that sound good that actually sound good I'm and I'm semi semi pleased with what, what I've got so far as far as the rhythm goes you know what I mean so I'm gonna take that get rid of that and remember to keep your notes right you don't want like your notes wrong that's super important when you're doing something like this your notes kind of if you mess your notes up your whole song is gonna be effed so let's keep going here huh <laughs> I 
oh yo that was cool how it like does that unevenness i don't know why i just love that sound um <coughs> let's go here and like this would be the last sound right here kind of goes up so for these three trip this like kind of triplet sound right here where it goes off beat i like to make those emphasized so I'm going to get more of a transient on that one. And then we're going to go here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, here we go. Isn't that a, like crazy? I love it because it's not like your typical synth. It's just, it's a, it's a different sound. You know what I mean? So that's what I did for this and for this. So I took a guitar sound here. I want this going on here. Because actually the other side is a little bit higher frequency. And another thing you have to do when you're manipulating samples is fade them in and fade them out. In Ableton it actually does this for you, but in Logic it doesn't. And when you're panning things, you want to add a stereo pan instead of a balance. One of you guys commenting actually uh, help me out with that. I never knew it was such a thing, but stereo panning is a lot, a way bigger pan. Balance panning is turning down one ear and turning up the other ear, whereas stereo panning is the entire stereo image. <laughs> I might try another guitar in this left ear because this one's having trouble competing or it might just be dull because it's <laughs> doesn't have OTT on it. Oh man, let's try a little bit of uh, OTT. I'm trying to get them to just match here. That's decent. mess with that later so we have a couple drums and the drums in this are really cool um, I obviously didn't want this to sound like tropical house I'm just not a fan of tropical house uh, although it does have tropical house elements like the kick is a tropical house kick like what are you gonna do by the way if you guys go to alexrumsound.com you can check out my courses sound bags and lesson inquiries. Go check out alexromsound.com if you're interested in any of those things. But by the way, yeah, we have a tropical house kick. I threw some extra things here to kind of keep it interesting. I'm probably gonna end up uh, throwing a lot more extra, you know, extra percussion in here. But the main percussion line is this. I totally do not want reverb on that clap. But anyway, that's what we're looking at. We have the same clap that we used in this. 
Only that one has a lot more reverb. And that's the same clap that I use in the verse. <laughs> oh man, this is just like the same clap all the way through. I like the clap though. It's got a, it's, it has a vibe to it. And so it totally works. Let's check out this. Oh, there's two layers to it. Layer one, layer two. Both of them together. I wanted the lower note to be more emphasized here so yeah that's what I did so making this I mean it doesn't get much more simple than that it's a it's a vocal chop melody with a single chop that is as easy as you're ever gonna get for a nice melody I wanted to be melodic here so I I went with the you know the single chop melody and I did something like this I took this chop this chop and I went like this dude went up here transpose and then this one do 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 you gotta go up a little bit yeah and I actually formed this entire chop melody <laughs> with that and that's sick I love this I think it, it needs a lot more I feel like we can have more power down here and I also feel like we can have a little bit up here as well but that's where I'm at with this drop guys hope you were able to learn something from this oh yeah wait I didn't show you the uh, bass lines so the bass lines are actually is actually a guitar mm -hmm. without the EQ though This is for that 200 range guitar. I've said in videos before, you need a bass line that hits this area really well. Not too strong, but not too not too soft either. Um, and then you want to layer that with sub bass. So this sub bass is actually a little bit different than some I usually do. Uh, this one's an octave higher than I usually go. Like audibly, it's an octave higher. Usually, I've ran deeper sub basses with a lighter kick. Um, but this kick was uh, hitting a lower note, so I was like, okay, let's try the higher bass line. I was able to hear it more. There was less of a hole in the mix. And so that worked a lot better for me. So I'm going to keep working on this and then we'll continue. I'm going to write the entire track next video. So like uh, you'll see what I do when doubling the size of this track. Lately, I've not been wanting to just like copy and paste the beginning and putting in, put it in the end. But I'm probably going to do that and then differentiate things later. Because uh, I don't like when the entire track is just the same thing repeated and that really shows up on your SoundCloud retention, too So when you make it when you post a track on SoundCloud, it's just like a pro tip when you po Post a track on SoundCloud and all the comments are in the beginning of the track and There's not many comments at the end of the track. That means people aren't 
paying attention to the end of your track as much because you've excited them in the beginning of the track, but in the end of the track, they're like, uh, what's the point of listening or commenting or getting excited about this part anymore? So now what I try to do is I, I try to make my tracks interesting all the way through, get people to listen all the way to the end. That's a good song when people will do that. Uh, hope you guys took some value. Go check out alexroomsound.com for all my sample packs, sound banks, lessons. You got it. And comment your thoughts on this video. Leave a like and subscribe. If you're new here, turn on the little notification thing. I would really appreciate that. Peace out, guys.